Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another live stream. I'm Shane Olson and today we're going to be sculpting this design by, I don't know how to say, Vitali. Getting chat open here. Hope you guys are doing well. Okay. See if this is working here. Hey guys, how you guys doing? So I changed it the last minute. I was going to do a, a different design, but I never heard back from the the, des, the artist. So, and this is a draw this in your own style. So it's kind of like they're they're automatically giving permission to uh you know do do this in your style so i decided to sculpt it these i i really like the draw this in your own style things um because you, then you get to see a bunch of different takes on it you know pretty cool all right just sharing this okay All right, let's uh, start here. Make this big. And then we'll shut this background off and get to it. So how are you guys doing today? It's pretty warm outside today. I'm pretty excited. The spring is coming. Hey, Neil. And Neil, this changed. I didn't hear from that other artist, so I decided to switch over to this last minute. <laughs> hey, Ika, how you doing? Let's see here. Hey, Charlie. Thanks. We'll see how far I can get on this. This is a more complex model than I usually do in a, during a stream. And I'm feeling a tad under the weather, so hopefully that doesn't affect me too much. <laughs> Figured I could. <laughs> It's been a while since I did a, a lady. Decided to start start with the, the green color. <laughs> kind of fun. I decided I'd block out my characters a little bit on the strange side. Watching other sculptors and how they do it is, uh, yeah, sometimes I'm like, man, I wonder if I should be doing my characters a different way. <laughs> hey, Corinne, how you doing? It's been a while. I haven't seen you. Thanks. Yeah, seems to be a, like a lot of fun to do. Hey Ruth. Hey Leonard. I'm doing good, thanks. I should get some music going for me. There we go. I 
I think I'm going to mirror this. It looks seems off to me already. Yeah, just as I thought. <laughs> uh, let's do this. There we go. She got such a small neck. Super small. Thought I'd listen to a little bit of Depeche Mode today. If anybody's wondering, I want to listen along. Is there an easy way in ZBrush to do semi curly hair or something like, I don't know, same in Kanto with fiber mesh? Um, yes and no. I mean, there, there is. So what you can do is you can start with some of the pre done, uh, fiber mesh settings. So if you hit comma and pull this up, you can go to fibers and there are some fibers here. Just kind of go through these and look for one that's close to what you want. And then you just go through the, um, through the sliders and try and get what you want. I'm sure there, are, I think there are tutorials out there for curly hair using fiber mesh. I don't use fiber mesh too much because um, it's not very good for 3D printing. You have, to, you have to specifically do super special things to it to make it print, mainly giving it volume. So I don't, I don't use fiber mesh all that much anymore. Let's see, yeah. Yeah, no problem. I think I'm going to make the cranium on her quite large this time. Larger than normal, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> Space cookie. Yeah, there's gotta be a story behind that. <laughs> okay, let's get some ears in there. Hey Ram, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. Hello everybody and welcome. Hope you're having a good Monday. Thanks, Neil. Hey, Wilberth. Concept looks like it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's funny because I picked this at the last minute. I was just uh, perusing Instagram and ran across this uh, Draw This In Your Style. I'm like, oh, that'd be fun. Sri Lanka, hello and welcome. First time catching me live? Well, welcome. I'm spending a lot of hours following your VODs. <laughs> nice.
Well, I'm glad you could catch it live. Alien eyes. Hmm. Hey, darling, how's it going? That's how you say your name. Welcome, welcome. Guess I could give her white eyes, <laughs> so not green eyes. Okay. Give her a nose. So funny because um, using using Sculptors Pro the way I do, I'm I'm less and less apt to block in things and rather than just pull them out with Sculptors. Either way works. Neither is wrong. <laughs> whatever you want to do to get you there. Yeah, I think I might. Um, I might combine this sooner than I usually do. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. <laughs> are any of you sculpting today? And if so, what are you sculpting? Ah, you found it, Neil, thanks. Hey Bruno, welcome, welcome. Oh Brad, you're sculpting Batman. So, you know, I almost did a Batman today because I'm done with it. It's a, it's a really, really great design by my friend David Boudreau. And I sculpted it a while ago, but I never finished it. I never colored it and rendered it. And I really want to print it out because it's like a perfect bust uh, for 3D printing. Um, so I wanted to finish it up and, and get it 3D printed. I can open it up for you guys so you can see. It's really fun. Let's see, I got to plug this drive back in. I can't imagine what Batman you're sculpting, Brad. I can't wait to see it. I'm sure it's really uh, graphical and stylized, right? Um, for flat looking eyes, that would that, would you keep the eyes as spheres or flatten them? Um, so it depends on the character. If it's like an anime character with super funky eyes, then you can do them flattish. There's nothing wrong with that, but I usually try my hardest to keep them spheres if I can, because it makes them easier to rig if you're going to rig them for animation. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, sorry. I need to load this up. <laughs>
Okay, did that? What in the heck? I thought I was loading this already, but I guess I wasn't. One second. It doesn't look like I'm doing anything, but I'm finding a file. <laughs> Okay, where is it? What is it called? Oh, David B. Batman. Okay. When you're in a rush, you can't find it. Here we go. All right. Check this out, you guys. <laughs> oh, I love this guy. Makes me laugh. <laughs> Hey Harry, how you doing? It's right here. Finish all the greeblies for my ad at this morning. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I, I just want to do a I need to finish the um I need to finish the bat signal. <laughs> Sorry, the uh the bat logo here. And then um I want to put a like a a gothic looking base you know like some kind of roman something or a gargoyle or something i don't know and then i want to continue the cape down and flatten it out on the base and then print it out and then yeah so i just love i love david's design just the size of his cranium and how tall the ears are and yeah just super fun anyway <laughs> makes me laugh I like to do do characters that make me laugh. You guys know this. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks like Mr. Incredible a little bit, doesn't it? Hey, Sammy. Welcome. Um, can you share a tip to subtract a mesh? I want to make some joints for your 3D model. Um, just uh, use live boolean. Um, that's the best way to do it is with live boolean. This character, I'm, I would demo it, but it, it would take a while to demo. I would just look up live Boolean, and that's how you do it. Hey, Cheryl. How did that scope turn out? Did you post it anywhere? Um, I didn't. I didn't finish it yet. I didn't have time last week to... Uh, to work on it as much as I wanted to. I, I, did, I did work on it a little bit after the stream, but not much. What do you toggle live boolean? It's right here. So, and then you need to set your sub tools to subtractive and then you can do it. Again, there's lots of tutorials on about live boolean online. Look up Michael Pavlovich and you can find a bunch, I think. Okay, I think I'm gonna connect this now. It's too low. Oh, thanks, Neil. There's a link for you. Live Boolean Basics. Thank you very much. Will you make another stylized dragon in the future? Um, I, who knows? Hey, Marcus, how are you? Good to see you. Okay, let's see. I'm going to, I think I'm going to give her a mouth interior this time. I didn't do one last week and I always regret it. So I think I want to this time. In a kill.
I, you know what? I don't really spend much time on Twitch anymore. <laughs> hey, the nerd. Um, I actually, I've, I've been doing a bunch of full characters for my students. So I kind of reserve those for my students now. Because I don't have time to do them for both, you know? So I just do busts on live streaming and then full characters for the students. At the hospital, that doesn't sound good. That's not where anybody wants to be. Hope you're all right, man. Okay, let's Z remesh this and see what we get. Actually, I'm just gonna um, do this. Whoop, ooh, too much. You still adding videos for the Thundercat sculpt? Yes, I will, I will in time. There we go. Yeah, man. Wish you the best. There's no fun. Oh, are you kidding, Tolk? Okay, okay. Livish art. Aha. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, I got to change that, don't I? Livish.art. Thank you for that. I think somebody else did this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Oh my gosh. That's a better version of it, too. Man. Okay. This seems like it's squished or something, but it looks the same, like the same design or the same image, but I don't know. Weird. Okay. Well, shoot. Here, give me just a second. Okay. I'm in Photoshop, you guys can't see it. I'm just doing something really quick. <laughs> just changing the name on that thing. Okay, now let's go get it. Da, da, da. Thanks for your patience. Sorry, guys. I want to make sure I get the right. There we go. Delete this one. There we go. Okay. Thank you. That's better. <laughs> Goodness sakes. It's very important to me to credit the original artists. So I appreciate it. Okay, let's stitch this together. Olivia, huh? Okay. <laughs> All right, there's, yeah. Guy have it right. Hey, what's up, Josh? How are you? I haven't seen you around for a while. Okay. Stitchy Lou. Here we go. Looks like an alien right now. Let's 
get this saved. Hey, Bruno. Um, how do you remesh a body part that has a crease on it without losing the nice sharp edge? Um, well, I usually subdivide the Z remeshed mesh and then project the um, detail from the original to the new one if there's a whole bunch of detail. If not, I'll just recrease the creases. It's easier to just go back in and just recrease them on the cleaner mesh. Save in this, there we go. Um, how do you pick a color from the picture and apply it to the mesh? Um, you basically just hit Z or Z on your, on your keyboard and then you hover over the image and hold down C, as in cat, whoops. And then you can see the color swatch changing. And then when you find a color you want, you just let go. And then hit Z or Z again on your keyboard and you're good to go. See, and that's how I snagged this green color on her face. Yeah, sure. Okay. Now let's, so now it's stitched together. I'll go lower with this. There we go. Hey, Overton, how are you, man? Thanks for dropping by. I'm just filling this with the density that I need, need it to be where I need it to be. Yeah, man. Let's see, crank this up a little bit. It's hard for me not to sing to Depeche Mode. <laughs> Do you have a 3D resin printer? Yes, I do. I have a Form 2 and a Form 3 and an AnyCubic Photon. No space in your dorm. Uh, their 3D printers are really small. They're smaller than the size of a microwave if you get a small, small one. Like the AnyCubic that I have is very small. I have a Form 2 and a Form 3 from Form Labs. Those are the ones I use the most. I love them to death. They're awesome. I found good deals on them used. Okay, let's uh, start to pull our nose out. I usually don't work this way, but I'm going to today. Yeah, you can get resins that are water-based that don't have the smells, and you should put it by a window <laughs> for sure. Yeah, just the form the form printers are expensive. Yeah, exactly. It's you love it, but it's pricey. Yeah, that's why I had to find it used. Hey, Chris. 
Thank you. Thanks, Crystal. Yeah, see, this is what I don't know. I don't like to make noses this way. <laughs> Print a printer. That's meta. You hope I'll stream more often. I don't have time to do two or three times a week. Sorry. I wish I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, neon. That 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 lower that large format version is very expensive. Um, on Twitter, I am my Shane Olson art, I think maybe Yeah, Shane Olson art on Twitter. And then on, on Instagram, I don't really use Instagram personally. I use it for my business, which I teach how to create characters online. Um, and the online course is called the 3d character workshop, like the logo right above my head right here. And, um, it's an online course and that's what keeps me so busy is that course doing stuff for that. And so you can check out 3d character workshop on Instagram and you can see other students work on there. You can see the results. <laughs> I feel like 80% of your work is the move brush. How precisely you use it is to get the shape is like magic. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I I was actually thinking about doing a challenge where I only use the move brush. I I wonder if I could do it. I'd like to think that I can, but I don't know. It'd be a fun challenge for sure. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I have some of the best students ever. <laughs> I can show off some of their... I like to show off some of their stuff. And if you're interested in joining us, you can find the information on the website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Hey, Alex. I'm doing well, thanks. So with the course, um, you get access to a, a, a private forum, a student forum. There's a lot of my students in here right now. <laughs> so I can show you. This is what the forum looks like. Sorry for the text over the top, but here's a bunch more of the student work going on in the forum right now. And here's one of Ica's pieces right here. I, yep, Ica Ruga right here. And there's Brad. Brad's been talking. There he is. There's, Brad's been posting a lot of stuff lately. Really cool stuff. Yes. Anyway, lots of blockouts. Super cool. So if you're interested in joining with us, yeah, check out all the info over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Hey, Matt, how are you doing? And we have a private Discord channel too. It's a lot of fun over there. We don't take ourselves too seriously. We just like to try and produce the best art we can, right guys? <laughs> and help each other out. It's a great community.
the snake hook only challenge. <laughs> you know who'd win that? Yes, I do. <laughs> Given <laughs> okay, you started it. <laughs> hey, I'm now you got me wondering if I could do lips with just the move brush without using crease. That's difficult. <laughs> Let's see if I can. <laughs> no control Z challenge. Yeah, like real clay. Yeah, I could do the no control Z challenge, but move brush only challenge. That's difficult. I would, I would include the smooth brush in there. You can't really, otherwise it would just look like a super lumpy mess. Moving smooth, moving smooth. Yeah, it's pretty hard to get the lips close together without using inflate. Um, uh, masking, I don't know. I'd, I would say no. <laughs> But because, yeah, masking would be, like, I could use it here, right? Then I could move it down. Maybe. Maybe masking. I don't know. Um, Buddha Man, that is actually how it works. Um... Yeah, you found a bug. That is a bug. But that's how layers work, unfortunately. See, this is still just lumpy as all heck. What happened? Why did it fuse? Okay, that's why. I need my pinch brush. I think I think I would just if I could only use the move brush, I think I would cry. <laughs> that would be like just an exercise in frustration is what that would be. <laughs> Possible, yes. But would you want, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. <laughs> I think I think her lips are just going to get fused together anyway. My eyeball. Oh, are you talking about with for the Zebra Summit? That one? Yeah, there. I could, there's actually a meme going around 
that says uh, that shows this little girl like excited thinking about sculpting, and then she's like crying when she's actually sculpting. I can relate. In the tutorial, are you talking about the um, with the pizza boxes, like like uh, changing eye size scale? Like scaling them if you got the size wrong. Um, I usually sculpt the eyelashes. Oh, types of Pixar. There's so many. Hey, ML. Carlos, how are you? Yeah, I love this concept. It's nice. I would say thank you, but I didn't do it. I chose it. <laughs> so I guess, thanks for that. <laughs> hey, from Turkey. Yeah, little Medusa. <laughs> reckless American. Aren't we all reckless? <laughs> I have to give a shout out to uh to Danny Mac because he he did this um really nice eye designer in another program that I love. I use that all the time whenever I go to render. I love it. All right. This is like super lumpy. Man, I'm struggling last week and this week. <laughs> Struggle is real. I'm feeling like that little girl. ML, what, which one are you talking about? Oh, 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 the bloodhound claw something or other. You know where it is, though, yeah? That guy is hard to kill. I told you about the cheese, though, right? The way you can cheese him. Okay. You forgot how so he spawns on a bridge next to a tower it's one of those dark nights so you have to make him spawn at night yeah I thought you were talking about that tip that Neil just posted Overton that's how I use live booleans oh man when somebody was asking about live booleans earlier I guess we could have showed him that one <laughs> How do you keep a smooth sculpt when you're starting out? I've had the issue where my sculpt ends up muddy and uneven. Uh, I just constantly smooth as I go, but the ultimate, like the end where you wanna be is a low resolution subdivided mesh is your cleanest mesh that you're gonna get. 
So it's okay if your, your mesh is lumpy as you're sculpting because of just know that eventually you can retopologize it, subdivide it, and it'll get smooth. I'm going to switch over to a heart, uh, stronger smooth brush. Where are you, small? Yeah, there's a smooth, stronger brush. I forgot you shared it for the summit, though. It was still. Oh, it's still just in course. Well, thanks for sharing it. Okay, let's clean some of this up. Kind of mess. It's midnight in my country. So glad when the notifications say you live stream. <laughs> Okay, her eyes are way too close together. Mm -mm. Sorry, it's gonna look weird for a minute. It's, well, it's gonna look weird for a while. I'm in what you call the Valley of the Suck. <laughs> Before it gets looking any better. You never saw the Boolean Ice tutorial? <laughs> yeah, Restream Bot is Neil. So it's it's Neil. Thanks, Neil. So the restream bot is the thing that that shares the 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 text with all of the different channels that we're streaming to right now, like um, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. If you type in YouTube, then Twitch and Facebook will see it. That's how it's supposed to work, anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm really wanting to Z remesh this and like get rid of all these lumps. I think I will. Still want to pull these eyes in even further. And this one's given me, just like last week. You know, I have to say, female faces, they are the most difficult to sculpt, in my opinion. Always have been. <laughs> How do you get, like, how do you become a sculptor on Pixelogic Live? Um, you can reach out to them. I think maybe try support at pixelogic.com. I don't know if it's support at Maxon now. I don't know if they've changed that. Sorry. Turn sculpture off for a minute. Oh. Yeah, and all of a sudden it's fast. <laughs> it's crazy because some, some of these brushes, when you have Sculptress Pro turned on, they're slow to use because they are making geometry at the same time. The brush is doing its thing, so it's just kind of slow. Yeah, usually I can I, I spend hours on faces rather than two hours. <laughs> so here, when I'm sculpting live and I'm talking about it, 
it adds another level of complexity <laughs> to the whole thing. Okay, I gotta even this out. So sometimes when you have geometry of different densities um, and you try to smooth one out, you're gonna, you might run into some trouble like this. Can I hollow the mesh using live Boolean? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, you found applications to stream for pixel logic? Nice, thank you. There is your answer. Hey Samwise, yeah, I think uh, I think ZBrush does have a an Ask ZBrush about how to hollow out your model. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Love the name, Samwise. <laughs> There you go, Neil on the case again. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. Uh, maybe not that dense. That works. Maybe take it a little more dense around the eyes. Hey, Doomer, how are you? Let me take this lighter and see if I can lightly There we go. Starting to think Nanners is the AI instead of... <laughs> That's funny. We have this inside joke in the, in the Discord, my student Discord, where on one video it sounded like I was saying banana. <laughs> And so, yeah, there was this whole thread of like memes about bananas. And then I hopped on, I didn't know what they were all talking about. And I'm like, are you talking about Neil? Or so, I don't, I can't remember, how did that come about? And now everybody calls Neil Manners. <laughs> Sorry, Neil. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go. You just found out your new job has one of those fridge size form labs printers. <laughs> nice. Oh, you're talking about the $10,000 ones, the giant ones. Awesome.
Yeah, we had a we had a refrigerator size sized printer at Disney, and it was an, an Envision Tech. It was called. Being in my shoes. Um, it's reckless at America. It's for, it's for my, uh, 3d character workshop students only. Sorry. It's not any, any student from anywhere. It's just, it has to do with, so I teach an online workshop called the 3d character workshop. And that discord channel is part of that workshop. I apologize for the confusion. Just trying to fix this jaw, it's really bothering me here. Discord server that I made for all of us just learning to senior level artists. We have a nice handful of artists, but we were always open. Sweet. Yeah, I was I've I've always thought about doing a public Discord server. I just don't know if I want to deal with that. <laughs> like having a private one is is a lot, you know, enough. I need to put my eyelashes on here. If if he wants to learn for sure. <laughs> Hey, Talden, how's it going? Hey, Tattoon, doing good, thanks. How are you? Okay, let's give let's put some eyelashes on here just to give me a point of reference.
Yeah, you can post a link. I don't care. Thanks for asking before you just did it. <laughs> okay, let me see here. I'm just using the topology brush if you guys didn't know. <laughs> just making an eyelid first and then an eyelash. Hey Johnny, how you doing? Yeah, I usually make a, my eyelids one of two ways. Either I'll just sculpt it, dig, dig it in, or sometimes I like to keep it separate just so it makes a more a crisper line where the eyelid meets the, the eye socket. Oh yeah, you can't post a link on YouTube. Sorry. Tattoon, I'm, I'm not, well, I'll be doing this amount of clothing on this one and that's about it. <laughs> I don't know if I'll get to that today. I'm just trying to make this, uh, trying to find the appeal here. Struggling to find the appeal, not gonna lie. I think it'll, it always seems to get there eventually. Just keep going. Oh, thanks for the, thanks for the pitch there, Samwise. I really appreciate it. Who shall have the land? Thank you. You made my day. I never tire of hearing people enjoying the course. <laughs> hey, Angry, how you doing? Greetings from Spain, hello. Spain is on my bucket list of the places I would love to see someday. Thanks, Carlos. Hey Maverick, Argentina, welcome to the stream. Uh, 
Uh, comics, yes, it happens all the time. You just kind of have to just say, all right, I'm getting paid for this. I got to get it done. Yeah, sometimes, you know, like these live sculpts that I do here, sometimes I'm really not in the mood to do it. But I'm just like, well, I'm going to do it. The hardest thing, I always tell my kids, the, the hardest thing to do is to get started. And once you're, start, once you're started, it becomes easy after that. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna sh let's get a body in here, at least blocked out. Oh, what's the brush you're using now? Um, are you talking about this this brush right here? This is my pinch brush. And it's based on uh, the Ma Cut brush. Um, so you can get my brushes for free over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com if you want to use these brushes. Split this off. <laughs> now, I was thinking about doing I haven't decided yet, no promises, but I've been thinking about doing full characters um, on YouTube's, uh, you know, the join button. It's like a community, like it's it's sort of like Patreon where you have different tiers. I might, I might do that. I need to gauge the interest to see if people, I wouldn't, I wouldn't teach as much as I do in the course, but I would do full characters. Because I feel honestly, I I kind of do it out of guilt. When will you get someone to talk to? Um. Carlos, I honestly, I think NF, NFTs are on their way out. I could be wrong, but yeah, I, I did have uh, an interview lined up, but it fell through and I need to line it back up. Because I, I want to ask him how there's, what his feelings, because he's big into it. I want to see what, he's still rocking them or if they're on their way out or what. I I hear different messages. <laughs> but to me to me it definitely feels like a cash grab. I'm just going to say that like like a gold rush for a minute that's just going to kind of fizzle. But that's me. That's my opinion. But if you can get paid by someone who wants you to do NFTs and they'll pay you a decent amount and won't say, you know, when, when I sell these NFTs, then I'll pay you. Yeah, never do that. Like straight up, 
cash money, you know, if you can get that, then, then do it, you know, cause that's, cause it's just a freelance job at that point. Yeah, I'm just hearing a lot of shady things going on. Just people trying to, trying their hardest to, to make the, as most money as they can in a short amount of time, right? Thanks, Buddha man. I'm trying. Well, I'm not talking about the, the right shift, click, save brigade. <laughs> I'm talking about the, the, the business people that aren't artists that are just trying to take advantage of artists. That's where I have issues. Are there any new tools from the last few updates that you're using? Um, you know, not really. I kind of just stick with the things that I know. Because I feel like if I'm using new tools that I'm not that familiar with on my live stream and I like, I struggle with it, I just, it makes me embarrassed be honest with you. So I'd rather just use the old sculpty sculpt tools and figure it out. <laughs> All right. Uh, I really want to get this so it just kind of disappears. I was doing a female face sculpt to using references before I joined. Do I need to learn facial anatomy or planes of the head to improve? Uh, yeah, it all helps. It all helps. Um, I... I, I don't approach my characters like other sculptors do. And sometimes I kind of wonder if I should. I, I'm thinking about the planes of the head in my head, in my brain, while I'm going through it. But I don't like, I don't know. I don't do the traditional like try and find all my landmarks and stuff. And I probably should. <laughs> Listed it publicly for non-commercial use in Disney. What? <laughs> Have you ever ordered 3D prints from Shapeways? I've not. Um, I've heard I've heard good and bad things. Um, you can give it a give it a try. See if you know. See how they do. Okay, let's get some actual eyelashes here. And then I need I need to scale the size of these eyes. Come on, select. Okay, let's see. I think I'm going to do this in two parts. Yeah, because this is a an anime-ish type eyelash.
Okay. Yeah, I was going to say that that's that's tricky. The if it's true, Disney shouldn't have done that for sure. But at the same time, it's kind of if you like if I do any Disney fan art, I don't release the model to the public. You know, whether it was for commercial use or not. They've been selling it at parks. Oh my gosh, that's no good. So I, I can see where like, you know, somebody working for Disney, like snag the design and Disney as a corporation doesn't even know what's going on with it and thinks they just paid this guy for his design, like internally. I could totally see that happening. But yeah, Disney corporate should address it. <laughs> yeah, Corinne. So Corinne's one of my students and she worked for Disney for a time doing, uh, doing, what were you working on, Corinne? Um, you, you did, uh, ornaments, right? Did you do other things too? All right. I got take care, man. Thanks for hanging out. Products for the parks. Yeah. I could totally see like a new person or an intern, like snagging it and saying that they did the work or something you know <laughs> when it's actually just a snag like The Thingiverse has, <laughs> gosh, that might even be where they got it from. Who knows? Oh, I see. Disney inspired model, but it wasn't of an actual character. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, that's different. Let's see, I'm gonna turn smoothness off. Oh thanks, it's got a it's got a long ways to go. <laughs> Um, oh, somebody was asking the coffee brain. Can you give a very quick explanation on how that topology br brush works? Yes, um, super, super short. This would this would make a good YouTube video actually. But um, so f step one, you have to have a mesh that has no subdivision levels. Sorry, let me turn my music off. It's too, it's too, it's giving me a headache. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. I closed my chat. Here, chat. Okay. Um, so essentially, on my interface, it's right here, but you can find it in the brush menu. Uh, just type BT and it'll show up right there. Um, so say if I were going to make these eyebrows, for example, um, you just kind of turn your camera so you can see. I turn, the, I turn my model to the side like this. Uh, it's called trackball navigation inside of ZBrush. A lot of people don't like it. I love it. I hated it at first. Now I love it. And it allows you to flip models on their side like this because you only really have one true arc in your arm and it pivots from whatever, if you're left-handed or right-handed, it's going to pivot from your elbow or your wrist 
to give you a nice arc. So I always turn my model to give me the best arc so I'm not fighting against it. Um, and then you just pick this topology brush. You want a, 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 a smaller size, not really small, but not big because it will give you these orange and black ticks as you draw like this. And then you, so I'm gonna go from thick to thin here or thin to thick as I go through. Now, I, I like to draw lines that go all the way across. And all you need to care about is, see those green circles that it has made where they cross? That's all you should care about. Um, the lines don't matter, only where they cross matters. And wherever they cross to make a four-sided or three-sided thing, that's when it'll make a polygon or a triangle. So, so, for example, just to prove my point, if I draw through here and draw this crazy squiggle, and draw through here again, you'll see it makes a square. Okay, it only cares about where you cross the lines. And the reason I go all the way through, all the way across, is because if I draw from this line to this line, sometimes it will double up that green circle and you won't get the square because it doesn't think it's a four-sided or three-sided thing. So I always draw all the way through, all the way across. Okay, so, and usually I go start in the end and it gives me a big square like this just so I know I'm in the ballpark. Then I draw one in the middle and then maybe two more like in thirds down here, something like that. And it doesn't really matter, matter if it's messy because um, you can clean it up later. But um, at this point, if you want to clean it up, you can. You just hold down Alt and draw on the on the surface of your object and it'll get rid of all those those leaders. And then I like to change my brush size down to one and lightly click on the surface a couple times. There it goes. And it'll look like it disappeared and masked off your base and didn't do anything, but it's actually there behind the model. And what I do now is I hit this uh, split unmask points and it will split that, what I just drew off into a new subtool. It's down here. Let's see, um, it's right here. Okay, so I can turn this to solo and you can see it. So here's the eyebrows that I just drew. Okay, and now this, so this is a, a fairly newish tool that ZBrush added that I love. I use it all the time. It's dynamic subdivisions with thickness. Okay, so um, I, I, I always like to turn on my wireframe so I can see what I'm doing. Hey, Lulu, how's it going? <laughs> How are you? Okay, so I can come through and I can clean this up if I want. Just nudge, nudge these around so they're straighter. And I can make this taper even more. And you can use Z Modeler stuff too. Like say, if you want to, like say, see how this has kind of this one little teeny tiny hair sticking off of there? Uh, so you can do an insert edge loop like this, insert another one like this, and then I want to delete a single poly. I can just delete that one like that, and now I have a single poly that's going to create that hair. And now if I hit D for dynamic subdivisions, it's going to look like a mess right now, but um, because it's, it's subdividing that single-sided mesh. But what I need to do is a few things. I need to add thickness to it. So I'll grab this thickness slider. Now this is on my user interface. Um, if you want to grab my user interface, I give it away for free over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. It comes with my brushes and my ruler file. You can get it. Um, so it's just right up here. Um, if you don't see it there, it's just under geometry, dynamic subdivisions right here. Okay, that's where all of this stuff is. I just pulled it out and put it on my uh, user interface. Okay, so I'm going to crank the thickness up. You can see it added thickness here. Let me give it a little bit more. Not that much. Okay, and then I want to get rid of the creases. So I will, I ha this is part of my user interface is this pop-up menu. Now these are things in the tool menu that I use most often. So I put them into a menu that I have quick access to. And here I hit uncrease all, which will take the creases away. And now it'll look something like this. It's basically subdividing it without creases. But I want, I want to do the subdivision um, after it, it does the, uh, the thickness. So if I do that, now it looks like this. Okay. So now, um, I, so now I have this big gap between the two. 
if I hit shift D, I can see the original. So uh, dynamic subdivisions just gives you a preview of the of what you want to see. Oh, hey, A cubed, how you doing? Yeah, I love this one. So cute. How are you? We were just talking about, I was thinking about doing like a, it'd be kind of fun to do a, well, fun and uh, discouraging and just, yeah, anyway, but I was thinking about doing a move brush only sculpt, if that's, if that's even possible. And somebody, I think it was like, like Aruga said, uh, um, we should do a, a snake hook only. <laughs> and you're like, we'd know who'd win that one. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we were talking about you earlier. <laughs> yeah, move only. And I, honestly, I would just want to do that to prove to everyone that it's not the brush that makes the sculpt, right? I mean, all the brushes help, but it's it's like, what brush are you using? That's not what you should be asking, <laughs> you know? Okay, so insert edge loop. If I insert an edge loop here and bring it up pretty close and then hit D again, you'll see that it, now it looks, it's, it closed that gap a little bit better like this. <laughs> it's the snake hook, <laughs> it's true. It's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. So Ashley is another sculptor here on uh, ZBrush Live. And she, she sculpts live on Wednesdays. You can catch her on Wednesdays. She does phenomenal monsters. I'm going to pop this up a little bit. Or maybe even overlap. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So these orange dots represent where the, where the actual mesh is. So you can grab these orange dots and move them around if you want to. After adding all the primitives, you dynamesh it? I don't. I used to, not anymore. You can, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but I use uh, Remesh by Union and Sculptress Pro these days. These days. It's like, it was like two, two or three years ago, back in the day. <laughs> years ago, I found a video from where someone did a model of a face with just the move brush in Sculptress. Oh, in Sculptress, right? Like the actual, the old, yeah, the original Sculptress. I actually have a YouTube video on Sculptress. It's my best performing YouTube video ever like 140,000 views or something like that. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> Snake Hook Brush was renamed the AAA Standard Brush. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not surprising at all. Sounds like a plan that I should do. Okay, I should have. I always regret make not making their craniums bigger, and then I make give them make them be lumpy headed. <laughs> lumpy headed. I'm gonna pull her muzzle way out more. Oh goodness, do I have, <laughs> I have the text going, don't I? Gosh dang it, I hate that bug. Here, let's fix it. Boom, now it's gone. Yeah, it's an OBS bug. Makes me grumpy. What else did I miss? I missed the, oh, right. I think Cheryl, you moved over to Twitch, didn't you? I think you were on Facebook before. 
Yeah, it looks like an, an article, like a news article. <laughs> this just in. You've been on Twitch the whole time? Okay. Why was I thinking you were on Facebook? I don't know. I gotta make these lips wider. Oh, thanks, Dark Knight. Appreciate it. They've been a lot of fun. I like hanging out with those guys. So, if you don't know what Dark Knight's talking about, I've been doing, I've been streaming live on Fridays with Stylus League. This Friday is my last, my last stream with them. And I've been sculpting um, Alan the Alien from Invincible. He's been a lot of fun. And he's a full character. But I started with a base mesh, so. But I just, I was taking him into pose. And I'll hopefully be rendering him out this Friday. Ashley was on that show too. What was your theme with them, Ashley? I, I'm sorry I didn't watch it. I didn't catch it. I'm a horrible person. Oh, you did three, three instead of four? You're such a bad person. No, I'm not the bad one. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Whoa, you know I'm kidding. is so small uh, yeah Samwise I watch them both and I love them yeah I'm a, I'm a huge uh, D&D nerd I follow Critical Role so I was I was excited to see them do a you know do the show kickstart it and everything and then how I just love how well it turned out it just makes me happy makes me happy And we got, has it only been an hour and a half? Gosh. I feel like I can't sit here this long anymore. I'm getting old. Can't sit here. <laughs> so, um, yes, I love the design so much that those are the, those characters may be the ones that I sculpt in my YouTube community. I've commissioned two of them so far. Um, to have my favorite designer Josh Joshua Black do some designs for me and he's done two of them and they look amazing actually he's done three of them <clears throat> oh gosh I didn't mean to do that that's not what I wanted okay there we go now I found this little trick. I can't remember who showed this to me, but if you're doing Sculptress, um, well, there's, I can't remember all their name, their names off the bat, Rob. Yes, I can. Keyleth and, um, Grog. He's the big one, right? And, uh, Vax is the girl of the twins. That's why I'm like, is it Vox? Is it Vax or Vox? I'm trying to remember, but the girl with the bow. Yeah. She's the third. Okay, anyway, the trick I have is so see these creases that I've put in right here for the um for the lower eyelash. I need to add, I need to redo this one. But um if I want to try and keep those in sculptress, but you can see the stretching happening from the pinch. So I want to increase the density on these. 
Um, I'm going to change my, oh, I did it again. Why did I do that? Okay. I mean, I meant to do this one, the top one. Okay. There we go. About this dense. I think we'll hold it. So say I don't want to smooth it out, but I want to add de density. I can hold down shift and just turn my Z intensity down to zero. And then I can just do a sweep across here and it won't smooth it out. It'll just um, add density right there. But I'm gonna have to pinch it anyway. Look, now I have more density. <laughs> my students keep saying I need to make a shirt says I am your density. Because <laughs> I say that word often. <laughs> Top tips. Here we go. Recrease. Now this is a mess. But I want my smoothing back. Give me my smoothing back. Vex is the girl. Okay, Vex. Yeah, her. I know. <laughs> oh, man, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, you sculptors pro, because you make me dense. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I can't think of any. I was, I was going to say, because you add resolution. No, it's stupid. <laughs> stupid. I have to give a big shout out to my old clan uh, avalanche over at Warner Brothers. So, um... I worked at Disney Interactive at Avalanche when uh, Disney Interactive owned Avalanche and they've since been purchased by Warner Brothers and now they're working on the new Harry Potter game and they just dropped a state of the game play just a few days ago and it looks amazing. You should go check it out. It's great. I love and miss all those guys. Such a great place to work. Yes, that is the same avalanche. There's a different avalanche that made Just Cause, and they, that is not the avalanche making Harry Potter. Isn't it crazy that the same studio that I worked for that made Disney Infinity is now making that Harry Potter legacy, and it looks so great. I mean, they've done a super good job. They had to learn Unreal Engine like overnight. Hey, what's up, Chris? Hogwarts. Oh, I think Legacy or Legacies, I can't remember what it's called. Yes, that one. Legacy, singular, not plural. You asked a question about Twitch, but I'm not sure if it was answered. What'd you say? Oh, where would you say is a good point to start on Twitch? I've not used Twitch before. I would like to know how to say. I uh, just, oh, just set up, set up an account. Um, and you can just start streaming. It's, it's, it's pretty easy. There's a no less than one bajillion YouTube tutorials on how to, how to get started on Twitch. So I am, this is the ZBrush Twitch channel. I don't own it. I just stream on here as a, as a volunteer. So does Ashley. We're just volunteers here. And uh, yeah, so I do have my own Twitch channel, but I don't stream on it. I'm the CEO, so you know. And A-Cube's my first mate. Number one. Give her some cheeky cheek volume. Turn up the volume.
pro title. First mate. Not vice president. First mate. <laughs> like a pirate ship. Okay, I clearly need to make her eyes bigger. And her neck her neck is so small. Okay. Let's go into perspective for a second. Mm hmm. It's always the eyes that give me the toughest time. Is that true for you, Ashley? Is that where you spend most of your time? On the eye holes. When is it actually preferred to use perspective mode? Whenever you feel the need. Um, I just use perspective mode to check my model occasionally because ZBrush doesn't like you to work in perspective mode, especially with things like clip brushes because they the clip brushes will clip through an angle um, because the, the model is skewed, so it won't clip straight through. Uh, so you just turn it on occasionally just to check and see if you're if it's looking okay in perspective. The eyes, yeah, depending on the style, it can take tweaking to make the wraparound feel right. Yep, that's it. The Witcher 4 was just announced to be using the Unreal. Oh, instead of the Red Engine. Interesting, interesting. Um, As a gamer that likes The Witcher, I'm happy about that news. Okay, work on this mouth just a little bit more, but yeah, I want to scale these eyes up, not too far. They're close to what they should be, but yeah, Witcher, uh, The Witcher Three is probably my all-time favorite game. I have to say, not gonna lie. Hey, Alec, how you doing? This angle sharper. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's helping. Uh, what setting do you have it in perspective to get the most realistic look? Um, I actually put it pretty close to orthographic and I set it to 85. So because 35 just, it, I don't know, it just pushes it out really, it, it feels like a a fisheye lens unless you zoom back like this. But if I'm I'm up in their face working on it like this, it just feels like somebody grabbed it and just kind of pulled it forward. <laughs> so it's it's too much. And then 50 is about, you know, a little a little less skew. And then 85. It's just enough to make it not orthographic. Right? And then so this is orthographic and this is in perspective. It just just kicks it enough that it feels and that's where I would set my camera in the program that I render in. So, yeah. Okay. Da, da, da. There we go. I want to pull these cheeks out more. That feels better. Thoughts on the animated Nightmare of the Wolf? I don't, I'm not familiar with that. Sorry. Um, thanks for spending your time with us. Yeah, sure. All right, well, th thanks for hanging out, Samwise. Appreciate it. Make sure you get that ring delivered. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help it. Um, off talk, do you watch, do you all watch AOT? Just finished season one and I'm freaking out. Love it so much. AOT. Tell me what AOT is. Looks 
I'm a dummy. I'm a dummy. Oh, Attack on Titan. I'm a, I, I want to watch that. I'm currently... I need to finish um, My Hero. I'm still trying to finish the last season of that. I should probably save this. <laughs> yeah, I like to watch assisted America on talent. Let's get some, uh, some eyes, eyes going on here. Oh, is it? Oh, I didn't know it's called Nightmare of the Wolf. There's an animation on Netflix. Oh, 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 got you. Okay, about Vesemir and his prime and how he came to, I love Vesemir. Also about many other things, but I must well. Oh, I sh yes. Um, I need to finish watching that, and I also need to watch season two of The Witcher. I liked the first season. It's all right. I like the guy who plays. The Witcher, Henry, he does a great job. Not a, not a fan of Yennefer as much. I like her acting, but I don't think she looks like the version from the games. So it kind of throws me off. <laughs> Whereas Henry looks exactly like the Witcher. Nice. I'll have to watch it. Thanks for the tip. Okay. Painting this eye. Hey, Howie, how's it going? I your advice earlier on tilting the model to accommodate the sweep of your arm. You're welcome. Sweep it. I mean, she's a good actress, but it just doesn't fit. And the story, her storyline is kind of weird. I don't know. Which live action is the greatest? I feel they should have chosen more physically accurate characters. Yeah, for Tristan Jennifer. See? Oh, that's what I'm saying. Such a wonderful art produces my next favorite character. This green hue. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty fun. Okay, and I was gonna fix these eyelashes. Yeah, exactly. That's how I feel. The, the actress, the actresses were great. They just didn't look the part. And the storyline was weird.
still need to bring that jar in. Your jar so wide. Why? Color her lips too, that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, Tris is great. And the voice actresses were great in the games. Turn on sculptures for this part. What material? Um, I always use Skin Shade 4. Just so I can see the colors good. Or, well, yeah, Green Wax. Hey, McBobbies, how you doing? McBobbles. I think I said McBobbies. Time to work on school videos. Fun, fun. Good luck. Um, I've only ever used a Wacom products for my tablets and my Cintiq, so I don't have any experience with any of the other tablets. But I know a lot of people enjoy the other tablets. So my advice would be just get the best that you can afford. And you don't need to go giant with the tablet. In fact, the big ones are too much. Um, I, I advise to get the medium sized one if you can. Um, and they make really cheap ones. So compared, compared to Cintiqs and they work, they work just fine. I, I used a tablet for years and years and years and years, so I had to work up to a Cintiq because they are expensive. Ever attended a con before where you had your own booth? I have. Every time I read your name, I feel like I know you or I've met you before. Um, I've only had a booth at one, and that's the Lightbox Expo. So if you were at the, the Lightbox Expo, the one year they had it live, <laughs> then you could possibly have seen me there. And I, I go to the ZBrush Summit when I can, uh, San Diego Comic-Con occasionally. There's a local one here in Salt Lake City called Fanex that I, I've done a talk at before. So at the San Diego Comic Con, I was at. Um, I was I wasn't at my own booth. I was at um, Anim Rigs booth because I had modeled a bunch of models for Anim Rigs, and it was a bunch of characters that animation students could use to practice. So that could have been it. All right, I don't know if I, if I accidentally close this or not. So you can see your teeth just a little bit.
I'm working in perspective and I like the way my character looks, but with perspective off, she looks kind of hunched. Should I turn off perspective and change it? Uh, not necessarily. It's not, that's not what it's really about. Um, it's just about how ZBrush wants you to work. And ZBrush likes you to work in, in orthographic, in specific tools. Would you agree with that, uh, Ashley? Are you still here? Hey, what's up, Jimmy? Why, thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, Ashley, I was just saying, uh, do you work in perspective most of the time or do you work in orthographic? Every artist is different. I was just saying that I find that, um, and this looks awesome. <laughs> I find that uh, working in perspective with certain tools in ZBrush gives me uh, not so pleasurable results. <laughs> and Jimmy's here. How about Jimmy? Do you work in uh, Do you work in perspective most of the time or orthographic? Would you say? Jimmy, I was just teasing. <laughs> Ortho for blocking perspective switching specifically for the face just to see if it looks right. Yep, exactly. Aiming to see hitting a concept or a likeness. There you go. Depends on the artwork you're aiming for. Yep. So I wouldn't say specifically. It's You basically use perspective to check your work. Don't work in orthographic the whole time. And don't work in perspective the whole time because it'll, yeah, sometimes it messes up. Yeah, so I'll turn on perspective occasionally and just check to make sure I'm starting to get the angles and of things that I want. Thanks, death in the flesh. Nice name. <laughs> Mostly I use high, high focal length or ortho. Yep, you switch all the time. I was just telling them I, I use 85. So that's, I don't use 35 because it, it just skews it and looks weird. So <clears throat> I use 85 is my, that's my go-to. Of this purple eyeshadow, I'm gonna snag it. If you guys don't know, don't know who Jimmy is, you should check out his work. He's an amazing sculptor. Sorry, I always have to fluff your feathers when you drop by, Jimmy. Chris, I don't, did you accidentally end that, that, that sentence early? I don't understand what you're trying to ask me. can't be fluffed <laughs> oh gosh that's a lot of ice cream <laughs> yeah anytime i always use ortho but sometimes perspective to check forced anatomy yep saying earlier i'd love to see how you do the hair yeah so um i will be continuing her uh next week and i'll i'll get i'll get to the hair but i'm probably just going to use um just use the tube brush. I might even make one snake and duplicate it all over her, her head and then just um, like bend it using a bend deformer. So if you want to look up in, in the meantime, if you want to look up uh, bend deformer, you can get a 
get an insight on what I'm going to be using. All right, I'm just going to, it's two, it's time to, time to be done, but I'm just, I can't stop. Got to keep tweaking. Thank you, Cheryl. Thanks for hanging out. Okay, well, I think that's it for today, everybody. Thank you for hanging out with me. Appreciate it, as always. Yep, can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> I still need to work on getting her eyes right. And her mouth, all the things. She's got a ways to go. Yeah, I need to give her some teeth, all the things. But, uh... Yeah, thanks for hanging out. When will be the next streaming? I stream every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So I should be, yeah, I should be here next Monday. Um, You should go back to work. Well, thanks thanks for hanging out with me, Ashley. You can catch Ashley on Wednesdays. Watch her stuff. It's awesome. All right, you guys, take care. And as always, you can get my brushes for free over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com and my user interface and my ruler file for 3D printing. So if you want that, go check it out. And I also teach an online course, 3D Character Workshop. I'd love to see you in there. Uh, we have a lot of fun. So until next time, we'll see you next Monday. All right. Cheers, guys. Thank you.